What does your body temperature and your height have in common? What does your body temperature have in common with your hemoglobin level? Or with your IQ? Well, here's what they have in common. They have in common the normal distribution. Some of you will know it as the bell curve, or if you're fancy, the Gaussian distribution. So why is the normal distribution important? Well, in medicine, we love to measure things. We measure all sorts of things, and most of these things fall on a normal distribution. And when we measure things, we like to know what's abnormal and what's normal. And we semi-arbitrarily set those numbers, usually by saying, well, if you're two standard deviations away from the mean and in that range, we'll call you normal. If you're outside of that range, we'll call you abnormal, which is a problem because 2.5% at the top end and 2.5% at the bottom end normally fall outside the normal range. So when it comes to temperature, the normal range that contains 95% of what's normal is between about 36.5 degrees Celsius and 37.5 degrees Celsius. Above that range and will consider you abnormal, even though now we know you have a 2.5% chance at the top end or a 2.5% chance at the bottom end of being just you, but being considered abnormal. Now one of the crazy things about temperature is that it varies. Our body temperature varies based on a bunch of things, for instance, age and sex and activity level and time of day uh, and whether you're taking the birth control pill or where you are in your menstrual cycle. And that change can vary as much as half a degree Celsius. The other thing about temperature is it depends where you measure it. If you're going to measure your body temperature in your ear, then it's going to be different from measuring it under your arm, which is going to be different from measuring it in your mouth or in your rectum. So where does that leave us in defining fever in humans? Well, we're going to do what we normally do with human measurements. We're going to take that normal range. We're going to take two standard deviations above the mean and somewhere around there we're going to draw a line in the sand. And we're going to say if you cross that line, we're going to say that you have a fever. Except that that number is going to vary depending on where you take the temperature. If it is a core temperature, that would be a tympanic temperature in your ear or a rectal temperature in your rectum. We're going to say that any, anything above 38 degrees Celsius is going to be considered a fever. If we're going to take a temperature under your arm, an axillary temperature, we're going to say anything above 37 degrees Celsius is a fever. And if we're going to take a temperature in your mouth, an oral temperature, we're going to say anything above 37.7 degrees is a fever. For years I had trouble remembering these thresholds that we call fever, and so I'm going to give you a great way to remember them. Number one, if it's a tympanic temperature, just think of the, th the 8 in 38 being split in half and becoming the ears of your patient, and that will remind you that tympanic temperature above 38 is fever. If it's a rectal temperature, just imagine that that 8 is one rectum on top of another rectum. I know that's a bit disgusting, but it's very memorable, and that will make you remember that anything above 38 in a rectal temperature will consider a fever. If the temperature is axillary under the arm, just imagine that that 7 is someone's arm and the cross piece of a 7 that some people draw when they draw 7s is the thermometer that's going under your patient's arm. If it's an oral temperature, just imagine that those two 7s, the 7.7 .7 and 37.7, .7, are two fangs uh, that sort of a Dracula character might have, and they're sticking out of his mouth. So that's how you remember that 37.7, .7, above 37.7, .7, is an oral temperature fever. So in summary, temperature, like many human measurements, falls along a normal distribution. And when we decide what to call a fever, we're really just taking two standard deviations away from the mean and establishing a cut point. But because temperature can vary based on sex and activity level and maybe the medication you're taking and certainly the time of day and your age, well, that cutoff point isn't perfect. Certainly most people who fall outside of that range will indeed have an abnormally high temperature. But there will be people who are outside of that range who are just normal, and that's normal for them. 
and there will be people who are inside of that range that we haven't labeled fever who have an abnormally high temperature for them.